Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR4 memory modules feature customizable multicolor lighting and are designed for overclocking with XMP 2.0 support. Give your build a unique look with vibrant RGB LED memory by Corsair. Click the link in the description for more information. Excellent! What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today, by popular demand, I'm going to be doing a review of this new motherboard from ASUS. This is the ASUS ROG Strix X370-F Gaming. And I've actually been asked quite a few times to review this motherboard, and I think there's a couple reasons why. I'll be doing an unboxing, going over the features, and then doing a setup and demonstration. But before we get into all that, let's talk about position in the marketplace. Because when it comes to Ryzen, people investing in the AM4 platform, I think a lot of the draw for that is that it has a very good price to performance ratio. And this board, costing about $190 as, at retail as of the filming of this video, is not the most expensive X370 motherboard on the market, but it's definitely not the cheapest either. When it comes to investing in Ryzen, you've got the super budget range, which is about 75 to 100 bucks for a motherboard, and that'll get you a micro ATX, maybe B350 motherboard. And I'm only looking at B350 and X370, by the way, because I think you should stick with an overclocking uh, capable motherboard if you go with Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7. And then the X370 stuff, which I think you should be investing about 150 to 200 dollars in. So this is towards the high end of that. But again, I think the reason why there's been so much interest in this board is because of the existence of this board, the Crosshair 6 Hero, which has been used for a ton of demonstrations, overclocking. This was the initially introduced at launch motherboard that was high end from Asus for Ryzen. So you probably saw a lot of coverage of this. However, this one costs about 250 bucks. So what's gonna be the difference from the Crosshair 6 Hero going to the X370-F Gaming besides about $60 less price? So here's a look at everything that comes in the retail box. That's the box, that's the motherboard. Everything else includes, of course, the manual and user's guide. Uh, you get a driver disc, which, they still do these? I guess, I guess they do. Uh, you get a, a set of stickers, so these are just some sort of blingy stickers with the ROG Strix logos on them, you know. Love them or hate them, they're there. Uh, these are a little bit more useful, ROG cable labels. Uh, you can actually stick these on SATA cables, and that will allow you to more easily tell uh, from their point of origin to the drive they're connected to, which is which. I actually kind of like these. Uh, hey, you can get 20% off of uh, cable mod gear if you want to get some RGB LEDs to go along with your motherboard. And then over here you got the more useful stuff, so uh, four serial ATA cables in all black, that's nice to have. You do get an extension uh, for your LEDs here. It's only one, but it's fairly long, so at least one of your LED strips you could position a little bit better in your case. You of course have an IO shield, and I would say this is a good one because it's got a nice flat black finish on the back, and instead of being the cheapo version with the little metal prongs that stick out everywhere that are annoying. It's got the nice squishy EMI protection there in the back. So that's nice to have. Uh, a couple tiny screws here. The one on the left there is just gonna be for your M.2 drive since you've only got one of those on the board. And then a couple more small ones here. These are for the 3D printing mounting points that the ASUS has started to put on some of their boards. So you got a couple of those for mounting. And then they've also included a high bandwidth SLI bridge. Uh, so HB SLI for two-way SLI configurations. And you know, it's not the prettiest one, but it is rigid PCB. And if you are doing a two-way SLI setup, that'll get you up and running. Oh, and they've included some uh, zip ties too. That's nice to have. Next, let's run down the board features. I'm gonna start off by pointing out all the fan headers. Uh, you get a total of seven on the board and they're all four pin PWM capable, starting off with three right up here in the top right. Uh, two of them are CPU main and CPU optional. You also have an AIO pump option that's right there. Moving all the way down to the bottom right, you got a couple more down here. One of these is for a water pump and one of them is a main. Even the ones that are labeled water pump, you can still connect uh, fans up to, so don't worry about that. But they are also uh, set up a little bit more so they're suitable for AIO pumps or if you're doing a water cool build. One more chassis fan header down here in the lower left and then one more chassis fan header right here for an exhaust at the rear. So it gives you a total of seven and you can access those via the fan controls that are in the UEFI BIOS as well as using the ASUS software. As for power delivery on the board here in the top left, we can see there's two fairly substantial heat sinks over the main power delivery areas. It's actually an 8 plus 2 uh, power delivery configuration that ASUS has gone with. Eight main phases for the CPU, two more phases for the SOC functions on the CPU, uh, and then a pretty nice clean design overall. There's also an accent light right here on the rear I.O. and there's actually multiple LEDs within that that can change different colors to give you a nice sort of 
a contrasting look as it's uh, switching between stuff, or a rainbow, or sort of, uh, it, it works with a lot of different effect features that are available in the ASUS Aura software. Of course, here on the top right, you have your four DDR4 DIMM slots for dual channel DDR4, pretty standard for any uh, B350 or X370 motherboard. Here's a 24 pin main power connector for the motherboard. There is a USB 3.1 header right there and that's actually coming straight from the chipset so that's a, a native connector and it is the new style connector uh, that ASUS worked with. It's been, we've seen it implemented on a few more motherboards lately but there uh, are some case manufacturers out there who are working to get that uh, header implemented on cases as well and definitely a huge upgrade over the standard USB 3 connector. Uh, the chipset heatsink is right here it's got a nice clean look to it. Note that there is no LED lighting on the chipset heatsink. That's actually one of the big differences between this motherboard, the X370-F Gaming, and the B350 uh, Gaming. Uh, so the X370 has the accent light up here, the B350-F Gaming has the accent light on here, and it can get blocked by, uh, by graphics cards if you have dual slot graphics cards in there. So it's up to you whether you think one is better than the other, but I do want to point out that that B350-F Gaming from ASUS costs only about $130 or $140 MS MSRP, and even as of this morning, I saw it on Newegg for $109 plus a $15 mail-in rebate, although it wasn't in stock, so bear that in mind if, whether or not you can actually find it. Now, all Ryzen CPUs are going to give you 24 PCI Express Gen 3 lanes, and here's basically how they're configured. Four of them go directly to the chipset to provide chipset functions. Eight go to this top slot here. Actually, you can do eight or 16 all to the top slot here. If you're using a two-way configuration, it'll be by eight in, in the top and by eight in this one here. Uh, if you're counting up, that's four plus eight plus eight, that makes 20. Gives you four left over, and those four left over ones are going to the M.2 slot right here. So you get a full PCI Express Gen 3 uh, by four connection for M.2 NVMe drives down there. And ASUS has actually gone all the way up to the uh, 110 length here. So 2280 is going to be pretty standard right there, but even if you have a longer M.2 drive, uh, you can fit it. So that's kind of cool. It is the only M.2 slot on the board, but that is pretty common uh, with these Ryzen setups simply because there's not enough PCIe lanes without using a splitter or something like that. But for most people, a single M.2 NVMe slot is all you're going to need. That's probably where your main SSD will go with your operating system on it. Uh, and if you do decide that uh, one isn't quite enough for you, you can get a riser card and put it in the second expansion slot here and that would work. Now as for the uh, PCIe lanes going to the chipset, the chipset has a bit of a splitter going in there to break off certain stuff like connection for SATA ports as well as USB ports. Uh, however, it does also control these two by one PCI Express Gen 2 slots here as well as the by four slot at the bottom. And bear in mind, you can't use all those at the same time. So you can use this slot uh, and not use both of those, or you can use both of those and not that slot. Uh, the top slot fortunately has its own connection, so that doesn't conflict with anything. And then finally down here on the bottom edge you have of course your front panel connectors, previously mentioned chassis fan headers, uh, a couple USB 3.0 uh, connectors, so that's nice if you have a case that doesn't support that USB 3.1 connector. Only a single USB 2 header on here, so bear that in mind if you need a couple of these you might want to get a uh, splitter from NZXT or something like that. Uh, there is a LED, I'm sorry, not an LED, but a temperature header right here where you can connect a, a diode and position that wherever you want in your case to monitor some temps. Um, and then of course you have the RGB LED header. Now, there's actually two of these on the board. One of them is down here on the bottom edge and then there's one up here on the top edge as well. So um, you get the RGB accents on the IO and then you got two RGB headers where you can add additional RGB LED strips to your case. Uh, just of course make sure you get a compatible one from someone like Cable Mod or Fantex or something like that. And then finally here in the bottom left you got uh, your audio front panel header as well as some of the Supreme FX audio hardware there, uh, audio grade capacitors. This is the Supreme FX S1220A 8 channel high definition codec in there. Uh, it has 120 decibel signal to noise playback and 113 decibel signal to noise ratio recording and then of course you can see the connectors for that for uh, the 8 channel out as well as an optical toss link out as well as the mic in of course. 
Rounding things out here on the rear I.O., you got a couple USB 2.0 ports, uh, DisplayPort and HDMI outs if you happen to install an APU on this. Those aren't available yet, they're going to be Ryzen 3 APUs. Uh, I'll talk about those when they come out. Uh, six USB 3.0 ports that are natively controlled by the chipset, an Intel Gigabit LAN, uh, a USB 3.1 connector, is actually two of them, a full-size Type A as well as a Type C. Those are controlled by an ASMedia add-on chip, and then of course the aforementioned audio connections. So here's a quick side-by-side -side with the Hero on the left and the X370-F on the right. This is by no means exhaustive, but I really quickly wanted to point out some of the differences between the boards as well as the similarities. You might notice that the layout is going to be extremely similar between the two of these, especially if you look at the layout of the PCI Express expansion slots over here. They both work the same way. They both have the same M.2 support right down here. Uh, the big differences with the Crosshair 6 Hero are going to be you have a bit more connectivity and uh, points down here for doing stuff like engaging LN2 slow mode, uh, compatibility with the ROG extender for example, and you do get a bit more connectivity on the I.O. This is the uh, Crosshair up on top so you get a couple more USB 3.0 ports, a couple more USB 2.0 ports. You don't get the video outs but I don't think that's a big deal since uh, we're not too worried about the uh, R3 processors right now. Same connection points as far as uh, Ethernet and USB 3.1, but on the crosshair you do get a rear-mounted uh, BIOS reset button as well as I believe this is for a MemOK function which you can activate as well, and that's actually pretty helpful. Of course you're also going to get a better, better power delivery configuration on the crosshair and the uh, X370-F gaming is missing a few other key useful features. You can get by without these, but I do like to have them. Uh, there's no LED post indicator up here in the top. There's no surface amount of power reset buttons down here at the bottom. And holy crap, I, I almost forgot to mention this, but another similarity that this board shares with the Crosshair 6 Hero, and especially when it comes to board layout, is it has support for AM3 mounts. So right now, that screw is lined up with the AM4 mount. You notice that hole right there, that lines up with AM3. So if you have an older heatsink fan or something like that, that only has AM3 and not AM4 yet, you can mount it to this motherboard. Although do bear in mind that when you're going that uh, with that route, often you will need to maintain the AM4 backplate or AM3 backplate. A lot of uh, CPU coolers actually use this one that come, comes with the motherboard. So you might need an AM3 backplate for this board if you go with an AM3 uh, cooling solution. So after putting in a bit of elbow grease, I have managed to get my test system all put together so I can demonstrate some of the lighting as well as just some of the functionality of this motherboard. Uh, now the components I'm using are the Fantex N2 Pro uh, old school case. Uh, I've had this one for a while so it was just on hand and easy to use. Uh, Entermax cooler, that is the ETS T40, no RGB on that one, so it's just there kind of getting the job done, keeping things cool. Incidentally, I did use the AM3 mount for that, so taking advantage of the AM3 mounting holes on this motherboard. Uh, for memory, I have the G Skills Trident Z kit, that's one of their RGB kits. This is actually a 4 by 8 gig kit, kit, but I only installed two of the 8 gig sticks. It is uh, rated for 3200 speed, cast latency 14, and I was able to plug those uh, values in and get the memory to work just fine. So hopefully that is a testament to increased uh, memory support and compatibility. I did also update to the latest BIOS version uh, 0808, which is available on the ASUS website. For storage, I just have the Patriot Hellfire 480 gig NVMe SSD. And then to uh, sort of flesh out the RGB features on this system, I have installed uh, an ASUS GTX 1080 Ti, which also has RGB lighting. And then I did add a cable mod RGB LED strip, which I've just sort of loosely placed along on the bottom of the case just to show the connectivity there as well. Once everything is plugged in and up and running, it's just a matter of getting into Windows 10 and loading up the ASUS Aura software. And uh, depending on the hardware you have connected, the ASUS Aura software may or may not be able to address it. I happen to use all hardware that's compatible, so it can control the G-Skill Trident ZRGB memory, as well as the ASUS graphics card, of course, the LEDs on the motherboard, and the LEDs on the RGB strip that I added at the bottom of the case. I've already gone over this software before, but ASUS has continued to update it and develop it. So this is definitely a great option for for anyone who's looking to build not just a nice high-end gaming PC, but also to customize it a little bit with the beauty and majesty of RGB LED lighting. And uh, I think this configuration is pretty nice because you could also, as I always like to say, turn them all off too if you decided that you got sick of them or you just wanted to get some shut-eye. 
So with all of that said, let's wrap up this video with some pros and cons. The pros for the X370-F Gaming are going to be that it's 60 bucks less than the Crosshair 6 Hero while providing you with most of the functionality you get with that motherboard. Second, I really like that it's got that USB 3.1 front panel connector. It's also got excellent BIOS support. Asus has already done three different BIOS versions of this board just in the past few weeks. And you do get a nice SSD secure race function in the BIOS, just one of those little added extras that I like. Memory support at higher frequencies is also very important with Ryzen and we're seeing great support from Asus with this board as well. And then finally, RGB implementation. You know, I've seen blingier boards when it comes to RGB, but I like what they've done with the accent up here. Having two RGB headers is great. And for anyone who's looking to get uh, an awesome gaming computer, as well as getting that RGB functionality in as well, I think you'll be pretty happy with this board, as well as the uh, coordination that you can get if you get an Asus graphics card as well. As for cons though, I do have a few of them. And the first is gonna be the price. It's 190 bucks and that's still a uh, decent 20 to 40 bucks cheaper than you can get other comparable X370 motherboards for. Also, if you go back to my top five favorite motherboard features video that I did just a couple weeks ago, uh, you'll notice that actually four of the five of those features aren't included on this board. No surface mounted power and reset buttons, no debug LED, no rear CMOS clear button that's easily accessible right there either, and no USB BIOS flashback, which is just one of my favorite ASUS features. I don't know why they're not including it on these uh, AMD boards so far, but you do have at least a USB BIOS recovery option uh, that you can get into if your BIOS gets corrupted. It's just not the same function where you don't need a CPU and memory as USB BIOS flashback and how that works. So guys, that is my review of the X370 F Gaming, definitely an excellent motherboard to add to Asus's lineup on the AMD side, and I think great to have a lot of these options and the look and feel of the ROG motherboards without having to pay that premium that you had to pay for the Crosshair 6 Hero. I think this is, would be a great motherboard for something like a Ryzen 7 CPU, something a little bit more higher end, but that's not necessarily to say you couldn't put an R5 in here either. Um, just bear in mind that if you are looking for the best bang for your buck, this might not be exactly the board you're looking for. This one's a little bit more blingy, a little bit more high, high end, but if you wanted an RGB build and you want something that's a little bit fancier, I think this would be a great choice for you. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Of course, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next video.